Hello and welcome. This is Michelle with Paper Stamp Inc. Thanks for stopping by my channel today, where you'll receive tips, techniques, and tutorials to inspire you in your own paper crafting projects. So, I hope that sounds like something you'd enjoy. Make sure to hit that red subscribe button down below. I appreciate your support that way. Today, we're going to do three quick, simple cards. Well, um, maybe not so quick because I'm not a very quick colorer, um, but these are great if you like to color. Let's go ahead and get into our supplies and then I'll show you how I made these two cards and we'll make the third one together. So for the paper, I have a piece of Grapefruit Grove that for is a, a grapefruit, a gorgeous grape. Oh my goodness. Um, that was, uh, got my G's there, but that was about it. Um, this is cut at four and a quarter by 11 inches, scored at five and a half for a top folding card. I have a Whisper White piece for the interior that is cut at four by five and a quarter. And then I have a panel for the top that is four by um, five and a quarter as well. We're going to emboss that in a little bit here. I have a piece of the um, Melon Mambo, and that is, let me just double check so I don't tell you wrong, three and a half by three and three quarters. And then my Whisper White is three and a quarter by three and a half. Then I have this strip of paper that is four inches by two inches. So I have um, started cutting down my paper in the last few months. Um, if you are fans of Kylie Bertucci over in Australia, uh, love her. She's coined the phrase, love it, chop it, and is all about chopping up that designer series paper and making that first cut sometimes is the hardest. And <laughs> once we've got it cut down, it's so much easier to use. Um, I do mine a little bit differently than she does, but um, I will provide a link to these uh, designs that are from a demonstrator in the UK, I believe. I will double check that and put that in the link below. But these are, you can put these in the DVD cases that we sell. And I have my DSP that I've cut up in here. Now I cut mine to four by six inch panels and, um, and that's the way I do the majority of them. And then as I cut them down, I have my scraps in here. So the four by six allows me to get three pieces of four by two inch uh, papers. And the reason I've just found four by six, I can get three wide and two deep so I can get six pieces out of all of them. And Yes, that's larger than our standard card base, but whatever I cut off as I'm uh, doing my layering, if I use a mat, then I just have that and put a little strip on the inside of the card to add some color. So let's go ahead and get our stamps and our ink out here so we can get rolling. So this, I'm using the Amazing Life stamp set, and this has got some really fun sentiments in it, but for today, I'm using the Life's Too Short to Say No to Cake and this little cake image. And then for inks, I am using the Memento Tuxedo Black to stamp the main image in. And then I'm bringing in some of our Stampin' Write markers. Now, of course, you guys are familiar, I'm sure, with the DSP always gives us the coordinating colors. And these printouts have it nice and easy on there for us. So I am using all of those colors in my Stampin' Blends, and then I've got all of them except for the um, Pineapple Punch in my ink pads that I'm using as well. So we're just going to have fun playing. I've used some different color combinations on these two cards, just mixing it up, and you can see I've at one point put the DSP strip at the bottom, one time at the top. If you had an image that was a little bit narrower or even um, rotated, you could Put your card this way as well so use this layout modify it slightly and you can get a lot of different looks by switching up the colors the dsp the direction and the stamps so let's go ahead and i'm going to bring my big shot in here i know i don't do that very often so i'm trying to um, bring this in from time to time because some people have asked me to do that and i'm using the polka dot embossing folder and love it that we've got this line here 
to help line up the cardstock. So I'm just going to slide that in there. I have just my um, number one tab. Some of them are, if you've got different versions of the Big Shot or Big Kick, then you're going to have maybe a slightly different layout. So use whatever you have for your embossing pads. And then I'm just going to crank this through there. And I love the magic of the embossing folders. Look at that. We've got this great pattern on there and got something there. I can't get most of that off. And it's going to be covered up for the most part anyway. So I'm not going to worry about getting that little splotch. I must have had something on my paper when I pressed it in there. So that's the big shot. I keep mine on a little uh, trolley kind of cart thing and it's always easily accessible. Let's go ahead and get our pieces out and I'm going to go ahead and adhere this down and get that part taken care of. I'm using, of course, my favorite liquid glue and uh, I seem to be getting a lot of shadows tonight. I'm doing a little bit different lighting, so I'm going to have to keep playing with that. I apologize for the shadows, but um, hopefully you guys can see enough what what I've got going on here. And uh, let me see if I can adjust it just a little bit without taking up too much time and see if that helps. And I'll put this little light on too. All right. We can go ahead and adhere this down as well. But I'm going to wait to adhere my Whisper White piece until I finish with my Stampin'. Because, you know, we've got two sides to every sheet of paper in case we mess up, right? So don't glue that down until you're sure you're happy with it. So I've gone ahead and mounted the cake and the Life's Too Short to Say No to Cake sentiment on the same block. That way I don't have to keep trying to line those up. With my Memento ink, I do a lot of twisting and, and turning to get that inked up well. And make sure I get all that extra ink off so I don't get that on my paper where I don't want to. And then I'm gonna come in and just tap on the top. Now these are photopolymer stamps, so I am gonna bring my piercing mat here so that I get that extra cushioning. Line this up and give that a nice push down. And there we go. And you know what? I'm not happy with that. So that's why we wait. Now I'm going to try that again. I, I just don't feel like that that got uh, that too short portion inked up as much as I would like it. So I may need to get some refill on my memento pad. All right, let's give this a you know, I'm looking through that and it's still just not looking like it's wanting to pick that up. There we go. Definitely time to re-ink that. It gets a lot of use. Hold that down. Peel that off and that's much better. Okay. So with the coloring, I just did really simple coloring and no rhyme or reason. I just played with the colors and grabbed whichever one I wanted to. Um, I guess the only thing I did do is I've always felt green for icing just was not a very appealing color. So I stayed away from that. But I'm just going to come in and very quickly go over these loops. So if you haven't heard, the Stampin' Storage items are, are out now, and these are a great modular system that Stampin' Up! has come up with for storing all of our, our goodies. So um, I've, I'll link the quick video I did with some copies of 
the different items and let's see actually I've got a quick flyer here so you can see all these fun different storage items that they have they're all modular so these stack on top of each other you can rearrange them buy the pieces that that you need whether you've got the stampin blends the markers the ink pads refills you can really customize it up to suit your needs so I'm a Getting a little far away for me to be coloring here. So please don't judge on the coloring skills I've, without getting my head right in there and um, getting in the way. I don't know that I can do a whole lot better than that. So these do have a, a brush end and a nib end. So I'm adjusting which ones I used based on how thick of a area I'm coloring. So I'm gonna use the brush in. I just decided to underline some of that, um, those lines there. And I'm gonna color in the cake word. You could leave these without coloring them if you want and really go quick and simple. You could use a colored ink pad for this. I just wanted to get some fun, bright, colors in there and let's see if we can come in with the well, let's do the pink again and I'm just going to outline life's and a yellow flame now the fun let's come in with these little dots and that's where the ink pads are coming in if you only have the markers you could use those definitely to ink up your stamps as well but I find it much quicker and simpler to use my ink pads when I can so we're going to pull these out and I'm going to open them all up which could be a little dangerous you know inky fingers if I'm transferring ink so I'm going to try and be careful and wipe my hands off well because I've already got some gorgeous grape on there and I am just going to take these dots and randomly place colors around and don't push too hard on these you don't want your uh, dots to all bleed into each other but do make sure you're wiping off any extra so you don't get that all over your card and I'm just going to come in and kind of do a little bit of a triangle design there and I'm leaving those open so I can come back and fill in once I get my main pattern down. I don't know, sometimes I probably over, overthink random. Can you do that? Can you overthink randomness? Anybody else do that? Give me a thumbs up if, if making a random pattern sometimes is a, a little difficult for you. You know, sometimes I spend too much, too much time thinking it, so I try and say, just go for it. Just get that down on there. And let's come in with some Coastal Cabana and do a little bit of that on there. And then go off a little bit. Bring a couple down in here. And there we go. Let's go ahead and put this on our, our panel. There we go. Tear this on. And look at this, guys. You know, if you've been following me, you're going to be amazed. A no dimensionals. What? Michelle did a card without using dimensionals. I know. I can do it. See? It's, it's possible. <laughs> you guys can too. No dimensionals and no bling. Wow. This is really uh, going outside my norm there, isn't it? I'm going to bring a, just a trio of dots in to dress up the inside of my card here and I'm going to use the happy birthday sentiment from the stamp set as well and I'm just going to line that up there put this down in the whoa oh good that was the back see those open ink pads 
They're dangerous. Should have closed those up. And your paper goes a flying. Make sure I've got the top to the top there. Line that up. There we go. Let me get these ink pads out of the way and bring in our other two cards. There's our three cards. Remember, if you need any of the supplies that are I've used in these projects, you can purchase them from my online store. And when you use the monthly host code, you receive free gifts from me. I appreciate your support. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you get more projects directly to your inbox as I post them. Thanks for stopping by. Make something creative and share it with someone special.